we are here today. We're going to, we're going to be talking about bringing your members uh, closer together with non-traditional technologies. Uh, my name is Krista Maller, and I am a mobile solutions consultant with Engage by Cell. And we are joined here today by my wonderful colleague, Emily White. Um, Emily is our project manager, and she has been... Um, working with our company for a few years. Um, I joined the Engage by Cell team about a year ago, but I also have a lot of experience with uh, involvement in my local chamber of commerce. So I'll uh, speak to that as we move on. But Emily, why don't you kind of start us off by giving a little bit of background information about our company? Yeah, of course. So Engage by Cell was founded 14 years ago. Uh, our founder, Dave Ashheim, created uh, this company to help uh, nonprofit organizations, cultural institutions, um, along with, you know, just businesses in general, uh, connect with their visitors and constituents uh, with mobile engagement platforms. So we have a few different divisions uh, which focus on different solutions. Uh, we have Guide by Cell, which uh, is more um, focused for our museum and cultural institutions. Uh, we have Train by Cell, which we offer uh, mobile training, HR, and onboarding solutions. Uh, we have Give by Cell, which is our mobile fundraising platforms, and we have Engage by Cell, which focuses on text messaging and membership platforms. So, yeah, and with uh, under the Engage by Cell umbrella, we do work with a lot of chambers across the nation. Uh, Emily mentioned the fundraising piece. I know that that's something that um, chambers do. And we do help um, some with like mobile fundraising technology, but a lot of the focus that we, you know, help chambers with is on that engagement and communication piece. Um, so that's a little bit about our background and our company. Um, and just to give you a little bit of um, information about, you know, our connection with chambers. Uh, as I mentioned, I joined my Chamber of Commerce. I'm in the state of Georgia, I'm near the Savannah area. Um, and it joined my Chamber of Commerce about eight years ago um, through like the leadership program that they were hosting. So through that, um, I got involved in a lot of committees. I served on a few committees. Um, from there, I went on to serve on the leadership board for two years. Um, and I also chaired what we called our ambassador committee. Um, you may have like a membership committee or something similar. But um, through that, I kind of experienced a lot of the uh, membership challenges and um, just kind of look at uh, the chamber through like that membership lens just because of my experience um, personally with um, chambers. And so through that, I kind of have an understanding and knowledge of the chambers, um, you know, or at least like our smaller chambers, we had around, you know, a thousand members um, kind of in the pre-COVID world. So I know that, you know, all of you come from, you know, big cities, small cities, it all kinds of varies. But, but I think that, you know, a lot of members we know um, just through the chambers that we work with join for a variety of different reasons. So they may join your chamber for networking or, um, you know, for advocacy because they know that you advocate for businesses in the community. Um, they may want to get, your members may join because they want to get involved in um, committees or, you know, they have special interests. And then they also, a lot of them will just join because it's kind of the right thing to do. They want to support, you know, the chamber because the chamber supports the business community. Um, so prior to COVID, um, our, cha our chambers that we work with uh, they were facing a lot of communication challenges and kind of needed that help um, keeping members engaged and informed. And um, we're going to push out polls in just a little bit, but before we do that, just kind of want to talk about um, communication for a moment and kind of how mobile plays a role. Um, now, a, a lot of us, you know, we all use 
communicate or email communication for, you know, business, I would think, you know, most of our chambers do that as well. Now, email open rates with, um, with email, it's like, traditionally, it's 20 to 30%. So other issues with email are they go to spam, um, maybe your member contacts, you know, have changed and you don't have current um, email addresses. Um, and then also, you know, when it comes to communicating information, um, I know a lot of members will send out business bulletins or other kind of like newsletters. Uh, that, that information may only be going to the person that pays the bill. So there may be other stakeholders, so to say, you know, in your members' businesses that aren't receiving that communication. So um, now that we're kind of living in a COVID world, there's, you know, a whole other myriad of issues. Um, Emily, I know you and I, we talk to, uh, you know, chambers and associations across the nation all the time. And it just seems like we're hearing like, a lot of the same things. Um, and then our conversation with Tammy yesterday um, you know, it was kind of the same, the same challenges. So, um, you know, your members, I know some of you are working remotely. That's the same goes for your members. Like they may or may not be open. Um, and Emily, you know, feel free to, to chime in. Um, they may or may not be open. Um, you know, I think Tammy told us yesterday that I think some of the members down near Miami, maybe you all were still in phase one, but then towards, you know, the north of the state, you all are in phase two and maybe you have a little bit more freedom, um, you know, to do in-person things. Um, and then we also have like program challenges. So you, you know, I know a lot of people are kind of grappling with, you know, if you have the ability to do in-person events or in-person meetings, do you, is it even smart to do it? So I know we're kind of hearing that with you know, kind of across the board, like even with schools, it's like people want, you know, in-person interaction and communication, um, but then, you know, they're going to have criticism either way. So whether you're doing virtual events or, you know, in-person events, there's still a lot of challenges at play. Um, and then also the communication piece. I think um, Emily and I have talked to you know, a lot of uh, businesses across the country, and it seems like everybody right now is even more inundated with emails than they were before. And I think, you know, a lot of that is because, you know, if Emily and I, if we worked in the office together previously, now we're having to email each other for communication. So, like, our inboxes are all full, and it's really easy to overlook, uh, you know, that those communication from chamber, you know, your chamber or from, you know, other, you know, other important emails. Um, and so also I think there's a lot to be said about through all of this, just the challenge of making sure that you're continuing to provide uh, value to your members. Um, I was telling Emily that I had a really interesting call uh, before this webinar with uh, an association in Tennessee. It wasn't a chamber, but it was still a membership-based association. And she was telling me, she was like, now is the time to make sure that our members are communicating value, that they are, you know, being over-communicated with. They know that we're advocating for them. Um, and there's no question of that value of membership, because when it comes time to renew, you know, you want to make sure that they're they're um, renewing their their chamber member membership because you know a lot of businesses are experiencing loss um, and so you don't want that uh, value of membership to be called into question and you know communication is is such an important part of that um, so I mean that's kind of wouldn't you say Emily kind of like a summary of what we're hearing yes um, and also just you know as members of, you know, a chamber through this time, you know, keeping your members engaged and informed and, um, you know, just staying, just communicating with them right now is, you know, a big deal. So just 
you know, trying to keep up with uh, the changes due to COVID, uh, you know, like Krista said, with emails being, you know, everyone's communicating through emails. So finding a way to stand out is key. Right. Absolutely. Um, and I think in the, uh, in the chat window, why don't you maybe push out some polls? That way we can hear from everybody else, maybe where they're at with their communication and, and events. Molly, if you could go ahead and push the first poll, um, which is, are you hosting in-person events right now? So go ahead and let us know, are you uh, part of the state that is hosting in-person events? Um, and if so, maybe you are just with, you know, a lot of regulations in place. So, and we'll uh, reveal the, uh, we'll give you a minute, and then we'll go ahead and see what everybody has to say. Okay, Molly, let's go ahead and show the results. Okay, so 60% is not holding, hosting in-person events right now. Yeah, and then it looks like, you know, you've got a few, you've got 30% that are. Um, I'd be interested to know what kind of regulations are in place. Um, but we have a few other questions, don't we? Yes, yeah, so Molly, go ahead and push the second poll, please. What are the biggest challenges with COVID-19? See, so no in-person events, lack of networking opportunities, which kind of goes hand in hand with that in-person events, um, the sharing of content and information, kind of what we talked about earlier, um, you know, with the communication piece, and then also budget cuts, whether it's for, you know, budget cuts within the chamber or maybe budget cuts from your members, you know, in their budget. Okay, let's go ahead and show the results. So, so 76%, uh, let's see, the biggest challenge is budget cuts. Yeah, there's no and, surprise. There. Yeah, no in-person events and lack of networking opportunities was a tie at 57%. Okay, and we have one more poll. Molly, if you could go ahead and push that out. How are you communicating with your members right now? So, and I think you can check all that apply. So email, phone or direct contact, text messaging, whether it's one-off text messages or it's, you know, a text messaging platform that you use. Um, I know a lot of chambers will use membership portals, um, social media, and then maybe even direct mail pieces. Okay, Molly, if you could go ahead and show us the results. Social media and email. So, social media is so great. I love social media. Absolutely. And email is great as well. Okay, so Krista, let's just go ahead and dive in. Yeah, absolutely. We can go ahead and start. And I'll say, like, I think that, that the results from the polls, I mean, it's no surprise there, and it kind of mirrors what we're hearing from everybody, is that, like, I think the lack of the in-person events is really causing, like, a lot of stress on the community, you know, the community, um, you know, and just, that lack of unity and what being a member of the chamber is all about. So um, let's go ahead and get started. Um, we are going to be focusing on ways that while you, uh, you know, it, 
your communication sounds like that's not as big of a deal, but you can use different types of non-traditional technology to make sure that you are engaging your members and um, letting them know that you are there, you are working for them, um, you are advocating for them, and um, you know if you can't host in-person events, let them know about virtual opportunities. So one way to do that and what um, a lot of chambers that we work with are doing is utilizing text messaging. So um, the advantages to text messaging whenever we looked at email are the open and red rates. So, you know, traditionally we looked at tech, our emails having like an open um, and red rate of 20 to 30 percent. And while email, you know, that's never going to go away, it's really great to have text message, text messaging to send um, more like targeted information, maybe um, updates about certain interests that they have, whether they, you know, are interested in healthcare updates or maybe, you know, government or small business. So I know that there's a lot of like, um, you know, different sectors of the economy that the chamber serves and the text messaging platform is um, a really great way to kind of have more targeted uh, and a more granular approach to um, to that communication. So, I mean, the advantages, like I said, of text messaging is that you have the ability to push any content. So links to your newsletters, um, anything that maybe lives online. If you have registration for any virtual events, you can send, um, you know, links to that. If um, maybe somebody is up for renewal that month, um, you can send a text reminder. Of course, you know, send your traditional email contact, but just like that added layer of reminders through um, a text messaging platform. Um, and then we also have, um, you know, chambers who will use um, like a text chat platform that allows like members to text in with any sort of questions or uh, concerns. And then the chamber uh, staff members are able to respond back um, through like a back-end platform and it just allows for that instant um, that instant communication. Uh, so I know that uh, we all we all like instant gratification um, and you know that's one way to you know stay connected on an instant basis. Um, and then you can also use it to kind of foster relationships like I said um, more for that like targeted communication so if you have all of your board members you know keep them updated and you know with one contact list and anybody maybe who's on you know your membership committee or you know anybody who's interested in any sort of advocacy you know have all of those people and they can opt in to the topics that they want communication on and then that way you're not um you know, worrying about spamming. Um, I mean, that's, Emily, do you want to touch on that at all? So text messaging is an amazing way to really target your um, audience. So just like Krista was stating, you know, your members can opt in to specific lists, you know, if they're interested in virtual or in-person events um, or, you know, membership dues are coming up. Uh, I feel like a lot of our clients that we are onboarding right now have been on the fence with mobile engagement solutions like text messaging um, and COVID really pushed them to, you know, go ahead and start utilizing this platform and the response and the engagement that they have gotten out of this has been absolutely amazing. And uh, I have had clients come back to me and say, I, I mean, I wish we would have done this sooner. This is something that we are going to, you know, keep up even after the pandemic. So. The next piece of kind of non-traditional technology that you uh, probably haven't heard about is um, a, a device that we call Personal Space Guardian. And Emily really specializes in this type of technology. So 
I'd love to hear just a little bit from you, Emily, about, you know, what, what this technology is, how it can help chambers, but then also how it can help their members in their members' businesses. Yeah, of course. So, uh, Engage by Cell partnered with a uh, engineering, an industrial engineering manufacturer outside of Italy uh, that has created this technology. Uh, they have been creating this for about 10 years. It's been in the industrial market to protect employees from dangerous equipment. And with COVID, they programmed the devices. You can see it in the photo on the slide, it's about the size of an Apple AirPod case uh, to be programmed to peer to peer. So basically it is a great social distancing reminder. You can program, um, they, they come programmed uh, at six feet for six seconds. So let's say you're passing by someone um, and you, know, you, you end up stopping and you're closer than six feet for six seconds, it will vibrate and uh, show a red light. So um, it is extremely helpful because I know whenever I'm out and about, you know, trying to eyeball the six feet is uh, extremely hard. So um, yeah, it's just a layer of security that, uh, and also, um, you know, for liability reasons, you know, this is a great uh, tool to have in the toolkit. So, yes. It's a great, uh, it's a great device. And, and um, you know, it, it's something that may or may not be a fit for everyone, but it is uh, very helpful uh, to know. And again, uh, even if it's not necessarily a fit for like a specific event um, to be able to pass that knowledge and awareness on to your members because it may be a fit for them in their workplace or um, you know the clients that they serve. Um, so let's move on to the next slide. Um, so the next piece of technology that um, we want to highlight are digital membership cards and I love um, I love this technology, it's, uh, it's something that's been utilized a little bit in the chamber realm, but I've seen more and more with um, associations picking up on more here lately. So the concept of a digital membership card is that it could be um, an identifying card that you can send to a member either through email or through a text message. Um, and then from there, the member receives not only an image of the card, like you see here on the screen, but they also get a link to download it to their Apple or Google wallet. Um, these membership cards are super helpful for member-only type events. Now, of course, you know, it sounds like a lot of you are not necessarily hosting um, in-person events right now, but um, just a great piece of technology to keep in mind for the future. Um, that way you can distinguish if somebody's coming to like a business after hours meeting, you know, who is a member and if you charge for guests to attend your events, you know, it's just a really easy streamlined way of doing that. And then there's, a, you know, it's much cheaper to do digital versus um, printing and of course, you know, eliminating your carbon um, footprint. But the, you know, advantage going forward once you start hosting in-person events is that it's touchless. So, you know, it just eliminates the exchanging of business cards or information and it really streamlines um, the check-in process. So it can be, um, these cards are really great. They can be completely personalized. Um, they can include links or information on the back. So definitely, you know, like I said, something that not a lot of chambers are utilizing, um, but I think now, you know, we're kind of um, seeing the value of, so. Right. Yeah, so, and the next, uh, the next type of technology that Emily and I want to highlight is um, a message board. And uh, you can think of this message board as kind of like a uh, 
members only uh, forum or, uh, you know, social media type type forum. So um, the concept is that it creates like a community or a safe place for you and your members to communicate and share content, whether it's on COVID related issues or just membership uh, issues in, in general, we've seen like a lot of people um, who, you know, will to host on certain topics and it's kind of like a Reddit feed. Um, and then Emily, you can send it through a text message link, right? You can do that as well, can't you? Yes, you can uh, push out the message board via text message to a specific list of, you know, uh, members or contacts so that it is, again, um, you know, just a very targeted uh, audience. Yeah, so, and then coupling with it with that text messaging um, piece, I think Alfred mentioned to the panelists earlier that, uh, you know, the big, the big pro for text messaging is the engagement, not necessarily like the one way um, communication. So, I mean, this is something that, you know, could really be a powerful engagement tool, not only with the text messaging, but then, you know, bringing your members together. So, um, let's see. And then the next um, type of technology is um, a leaderboard. Now, I have talked to some cham chambers, I know our chamber kind of played around with uh, this topic. It may be something you're currently doing or maybe have thought of, but almost like a point system um, to keep members engaged. So I'm interested to hear if any of you all have are utilizing a point system, um, you know, let, let us know in the chat window or if it's something, you know, that you've thought about, let us know. Um, but essentially, you know, members that participate in whether it's virtual events or in-person events or, you know, check, check certain boxes, um, you know, they're assigned member points or like engagement points. And our, Emily, maybe you can talk about leaderboard a little bit and how it works and tracks everything. But I mean, essentially the concept is to kind of create like friendly competition and track everybody's like points uh, in real time um, to kind of reward those members who are most engaged. Yes, so the leaderboard uh, tracks in real time and we offer uh, detailed reporting and analytics as well. Uh, so you could actually, um, you know, uh, keep members engaged with trivia about, you know, businesses in the area or really anything that you'd like. Um, so you can house these uh, forms, trivia, or quizzes on the leaderboard as well. So um, it's a great engagement piece and, you know, creates friendly competition. Yeah. Absolutely. And one uh, question that I saw pop up in the chat window that I want to address. And Emily, you'll Krista, your, your audio is going in and out a little bit, so. Sorry, everyone. I, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I was having audio issues earlier, so just, just yell at me if um, I need to speak up. <laughs> um, but somebody, I think Debbie, asked a question, what's the advantage of message board over a Facebook closed group? And the answer to that is not everybody is on Facebook. So message board is something that they can access uh, with the tap of a link. And they don't have to have like a Facebook membership um, or like a Facebook account. Um, and then, you know, the thing with Facebook is if you're not logged in and you're not actively checking those um, alerts, you know, you're going to miss out on those discussions. Whereas, um, you know, with text messaging, the, all of these mobile technologies, you don't have to have a link. Uh, I'm sorry, you don't have to have an app or download anything to be able to access the content or the information. So that's kind of the advantage there. Yeah, that is a huge plus. Yeah, yeah. But that's a good question, Debbie. So thanks for bringing up that point. Um, and the same goes for leaderboard as well. None of these uh, technologies that we're talking about, you know, have to be downloaded and they don't have to have an app or any sort of like platform associated with them. 
Um, so the next focus would be um, kind of utilizing like our uh, a digital form or a text message to encourage renewals and make that process more streamlined and easy. So there's two ways that you can do this. Um, you can push out a text message with maybe a reminder that, uh, you know, their membership is up for renewal and then link if you have like an online or like, I'm sorry, a page that you host on your website, uh, you can link it to an external site. Or Emily, do you want to kind of go over like the mobile form that can be hosted um, through Engage by Cell? Yeah, so we have a um, mobile form platform, which uh, is integrated with your merchant processor. And basically, instead of linking to uh, your, uh, your membership uh, renewal form, it would just link to ours. Uh, and we can al also push uh, donate, not donation, membership renewal reminders as well. Yeah. And then also those email receipts um, are a yeah. huge plus as well. So I think that platform will push out an email receipt. Um, so that's, you know, one less thing that you have to do. So um, yeah, two different ways. I know that the, the membership renewals can be a pain to kind of track down and collect. So, you know, of course, send a, your normal email reminder, but then this added layer of, you know, communication where someone can just tap a link and just boom, 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 and put all of their uh, renewal information. It just streamlines the process. Um, and then, you know, something that they can access instantly. So let's move on. So fundraising is another way that we uh, help chambers. Um, and there's two different main platforms that uh, chambers are utilizing. One is kind of similar to the collection form that Emily just mentioned. It's um, this nice little custom mobile page um, that lives um, on your phone and it's delivered through a text message. Um, if, if you were hosting some sort of uh, gala down the road or just simply doing like fundraising, um, on behalf of the chamber, uh, someone could opt in through a unique keyword um, and land right here on this page. So they can make a donation of their choice and then it can be uh, you know, linked right into your merchant processing account. Um, and so you know, it streamlines everything and it, you would process your donation the way you normally do. Uh, and then the page also has, um, a, a drop down menu so someone could earmark a fund whether they were donating to sponsor uh, your golf tournament or for your fall gala or you know if you're doing any sort of like virtual fundraising event um, that's you know really helpful and then Emily why don't you talk about um, the platform that allows individuals uh, to make a gift that's charged on your cell phone bill yeah, so we partnered with the Mobile Giving Foundation where instead of uh, the donation um, be uh, go directly to the mobile donate page, the donation would be charged to their phone bill. So it's really easy. All that they would have to do is text in that keyword and that's it. Yeah, and the advantage to that platform wouldn't necessarily be for event sponsorship. It may be just an individual who, you know, wants to help out um, and donate $5 a month to the local chamber. Right. Yeah. And save some time by not, you know, filling out the credit card and information. You know, that does take some time. Absolutely. And I accidentally bumped us up. Um, two slides. So let's see if I can get to the next one. Okay. So um, the last piece of technology that we want to highlight is um, mobile apps. And this is, again, a specialty of Emily's. So she can talk a little bit about, you know, mobile apps versus native apps. But um, essentially, the mobile app 
Um, it's great. There's no IT or downloading required. Um, this is something that you can customize, whether it's for a virtual event um, or maybe a conference that uh, you're hosting, um, or really maybe if you wanted to highlight the benefits of membership. I mean, this mobile app could include any sort of content um, that you wish to feature about your chamber. So, but I mean, a lot of times people will use it for virtual events, uh, maybe, you know, upload agendas or forms, um, any sort of like FAQs. Um, and then you can incorporate like a chat for attendees so um, you can field questions. And again, it doesn't have to be event specific. It can be a mobile app just for um, your chamber that can be accessed and sent through a text message instead of downloading it through the app store. So Emily, do you have anything you wanna add on that? Yeah, you can even add an interactive map with all of the businesses, um, you know, in your area that are a part of the chamber and uh, add their uh, callable phone number and include more information about each business. So uh, everything is drag and drop. It's really easy to build. Um, I build all of our demo accounts and it takes me about a day or two and it's just extremely easy anyone could do it. Yeah, I think typically, um, I've, well, you know, I've heard like if you can manage a social media um, account, you can, you know, pretty much master a mobile app platform, um, which, you know, the, the concept can be pretty intimidating for somebody who's not an IT whiz, uh, but this makes it um, super, you know, super easy and user friendly. So, yeah, so I think that, that pretty much wraps up um, the, uh, the technologies that we wanted to cover, but I mean, we still have some time um, to go over some questions. Um, I saw some stuff come through um, in the chat window throughout the discussion, but it was a little hard for me to present and monitor. So if you have any questions, uh, you know, go ahead and chat us now. Um, and Molly, if you saw anything, uh, Molly's our, our marketing, um, woman the wizard of oz powering this <laughs> webinar <laughs> behind the scenes so if you saw it, <laughs> let us know um, yeah for sure yeah okay perfect and then if you all um you know are interested in more information i would encourage you to uh drop your information in the chat window i think tammy is going to be um emailing out this session uh the recording so that you all can either re-watch it or um for anybody who missed it um and our content contact information is right here if you'd like to learn more about mobile technology um or our platforms or want to set up a time to chat you know about those specifics you can reach out to emily or myself so um and let's see i see that Debbie is asking about the leaderboard. Can you run multiple events and groups at the same time? Um, Emily, do you want to speak to that? Yes. So technically, you could add um, the leaderboard feature as many times as you'd like. So you could even create custom leaderboards for you know each event or group. So yes. Okay, and let's see, Alfred, he is asking, um, is there an integration into some of these mobile platforms directly into the CRMs? Um, we, at the heart of this all, are a mobile technology company. We have uh, engineers um, on our team that are great who can perform um, integrations as long as there are open APIs. So I would say, let's chat offline. Um, but the answer, you know, in short is, is yes, it can be done. We just would have to do, um, some, some, you know, we, we'd have to take a look offline, um, cause it would depend on the CRM that you are using. Um, let's see, we missed, Emily, did you see anything else? Uh, Andrew, we will be contacting you shortly. Yeah. Uh, 
APIs to see if someone else asked about APIs. Um, yeah, so I would say I think that uh, most use Chamber Master or Atlas, and I am uh, I am familiar with uh, Chamber Master. So, um, but I will say these platforms. I mean, without an integration, I'd say like ninety percent of our clients uh, do everything manually. It's all very easy. Uh, there's reports. Um, and contact information can all be uploaded um, and exported through a CSV or an Excel file. Um, so, but I would say, uh, unless there's any other questions, I think that pretty much sums up the presentation um, to, uh, for today. So um, we're looking forward to talking with some of you after you know, after this webinar and hope to be in contact with you soon. And we just want to thank Tammy again for the opportunity to, to present and chat with you all and um, hope you uh, learned a thing or two about maybe some ways that you can use uh, technology, you know, now uh, during COVID, but then also, you know, going forward. So thank you all for your time today. And I think that concludes our presentation.